Hi, I'm Dr. James Wittig. I'm an orthopedic oncologist and sarcoma surgeon. And today I want to talk to you about how to read an osteosarcoma on an x-ray and looking at the difference between benign and malignant or cancerous bone tumors. So pay attention. So let's talk about how to read an osteosarcoma on an x-ray and look at the difference between our benign and malignant bone tumors. They all have distinctive appearances. So first of all, this is what normal x-rays look like. This is an x-ray of a knee. This is an AP x-ray of a knee, and this is a lateral x-ray. This is our femur, this is our tibia, and this is our kneecap or our patella. Same thing here from the side view. Femur, tibia, patella. The small bone in the leg is the fibula bone. And we can see on an x-ray, bone itself appears a white or a very light, light gray, and the soft tissues around it, the muscle tissues are a little bit darker gray, and then just the air and the fat is black. And you can see little trabeculae, which are these tiny little lines in the bone, and that's the normal soft bone in the center of the bone. And we have the hard outer cortex of the bone, which is this thick white line that goes down the inside and outside of the bone. This is the joint space. It's radiolucent or it's dark because there's cartilage there and the cartilage does not show up on the x-ray, just the bone does. And this is all important to know because uh, when we go to assess bone tumors, they could have different radiological appearances depending on the amount of bone they destroyed and depending upon how fast they are growing. So these are two examples of an osteosarcoma. This image on the left is a conventional osteosarcoma, which is the most common type of osteosarcoma that affects teenagers and children, primarily the ages of 10 to 20. And we can see that the tumor developed from the center of the bone and formed this very large mass around the bone. And it's producing a white, fluffy, cloud-like substance within it, which is bone. An osteosarcoma is called an osteosarcoma because it is a sarcoma that produces bone, not because it's a sarcoma that arises from the bone, it's because it produces bone. This other image on the right here is a parosteal osteosarcoma, which arises on the surface of the bone and usually affects patients between the ages of 20 and 40 years of age with a slight female predominance and the posterior distal femur is the most common site, or the back of the lower end of the femur, just above the knee. And you could see this density, this white density on the surface of the bone because it, it's a sarcoma that's producing bone. Okay, when we look at an osteosarcoma, an osteosarcoma is a malignant, rapidly dividing sarcoma. It, the conventional variety arises from the center of the bone and it grows very rapidly and permeates through the bone. When a tumor gets into the bone, in order to, for the bone to be eaten up, there's several mechanisms that eat up the bone or create a hole in the bone. And these include the osteoclasts, which are normal cells within the bone that are stimulated and take a few weeks time to actually eat up and resorb the bone. And there's hyperemia from additional blood flow, along with some enzymes that are produced by the tumor. But these tumors grow so rapidly that they overwhelm the body's ability to eat up the bone and actually permeate through the bone. So we can see that there's this fuzziness within the center of the bone in the medullary canal where the normal soft bone exists. And the tumor has grown so rapidly it spreads out through the natural pores, uh, also called haversion systems, into the soft tissues. When it does that, it creates a periosteal reaction, often at the perimeter, and it creates fluffy white cloud-like densities from producing the bone. So it produces bone, and if that bone mineralizes or calcifies, you can see fluffy white density. If you look very carefully in the center of the bone, there is a, there's a fluffy white cloud-like density in the center of the bone, but you cannot make out where this tumor begins and where it ends. You can't see the perimeter of the tumor and judge the difference between the tumor and normal bone. When the tumor spreads to the outside of the bone and creates this soft tissue mass, it destroys the periosteum directly overlying it, 
but it lifts up the periosteum at the perimeter and you get what's called a Codman's triangle. So these are some of the different characteristics of a malignant tumor. Malignant bone tumors are permeative and moth-eaten and they sort of blend imperceptibly with each other. If they're caught very early, they could be very difficult to pick up on a plain x-ray. They can spread into the soft tissues and 95% of osteosarcomas or conventional osteosarcomas spread into the soft tissues and create a soft tissue mass. And they create interrupted periosteal reactions, meaning they chew up the periosteum in the area where they uh, exit the bone or form a soft tissue mass but form, can form these periosteal reactions at its perimeter, which is a very worrisome sign. Now, benign tumors are geographic in nature, meaning that you can tell, out, tell the borders of the tumor where the tumor begins and ends. And we see over here an osteoblastoma, which is a benign bone-forming tumor. Okay, we can, it's geographic where there's a sharp zone of transition, narrow zone of transition between the tumor and normal bone, you can make out where the tumor begins and ends. The tumor can actually destroy the cortex, but it grows much slower than an osteosarcoma. For it to destroy the cortex and get into the soft tissues, it needs to stimulate the osteoclast to, to start eating the bone. And it grows slow enough for that to occur. It does not, it does not penetrate through the reversion systems. But when it penetrates the cortex, the periosteum is lifted up it's not destroyed, and you get a solid periosteal reaction around the mass or an uninterrupted periosteal reaction. Now, you might see a little mineralization in an osteoblastoma, helping you to place it in a bone-forming tumor category. Mineralization typically occurs in bone-forming tumors and cartilage-forming tumors. And, but the key here is determining benign from malignant. Benign are well circumscribed, sharp zone of transition. They can have a soft tissue mass associated with them, and they have a uninterrupted periosteal reaction, or they're surrounded by the periosteum. And because it's growing slowly, the body tries to seal the tumor off from the adjacent bone, prevent it from growing more. You could also get a sclerotic margin around the perimeter. Malignant tumors are permeative. You can't make out where that tumor begins and ends. It spreads into the soft tissue. If you notice here, the cortex is not completely destroyed, so it gets into the soft tissue by permeating through the reversion canals, and it's associated with uh, interrupted periosteal reactions, such as a Codman's triangle. So all important things to remember. And when you look at these x-rays, these are, these are prototypical types of both a malignant and a benign bone-forming tumor, which is important for you to know. Thank you.